guys and welcome back to another video so for today's sketchbook doodling session i am going to be both doing some painting with gouache and some sketches with pencil so the sketch on the left side page in the i guess like palette color eno and the prismacolor coal erase i have a sketch done of ike evelyn from Niji San Gen, and I have drawn him kind of with his new outfit. I did do brief planning with some sketches on the back side, just kind of fleshing out things that I wanted to potentially include. Now, I'm gonna preface this with saying that the painting didn't turn out the way that I was envisioning it, but it does give me a little bit of, I don't know, inspiration or at least like the drive to do something for a later project, I kind of want to jump back into potentially doing Art Nouveau-ish style, maybe with the Luxium boys or just like the uh, the VTubers I like in general. Maybe I'll do it of my Oshis or something. Because I've done a few in the past, or at least attempts, where it was of, I think, Venti and Zhongli from Genshin Impact. And I kind of want to revisit those because I don't know if I want to do it digitally or if I'll do the traditional art route again. So... Yeah, uh, I'll keep you guys posted whether or not I will attempt to do that, and I'll definitely try my best to document the process once again. But uh, let's talk about the drawing. So I went ahead and used the kneaded eraser to go ahead and lighten up my sketch to, so we can kind of prep it for the watercoloring portion, which I'm doing now. But because I did... I, or I didn't show you guys the sketching portion, so I did the sketch with the pilot color Eno as usual. And as you guys know, that is water soluble, so it would disappear when it comes in contact with a lot of the water from my watercolor or even my gouache. So because I don't want it to disappear, I did do a cleaner sketch on top with the Prismacolor Coal Erase and the color Carmine. So uh, when I decided to lighten up the sketch a little bit, I did have to go back into, I think, his glasses area where I didn't really do the cleaner sketch on top and kind of refill that back in just because I don't want to lose it even though I feel like uh, that didn't really help me in the long run because I ended up covering a lot of the the skin color over top of his glasses sketch so I'm not going to be able to see it anyway so it feels kind of stupid um but yeah I am proceeding with watercolor just for I think two reasons I like to stay usually. So one is to kind of prep the paper and two is to kind of to help me plan out the colors a little bit better prior to working with gouache. Um, maybe in the future when I'm working with gouache, I'll do like the preliminary colors and washes with just a watered down version of the gouache instead of using the watercolor. But we'll see. My confidence with gouache is a little bit low, I guess. So working with gouache on this paper, I don't know. I I don't know if I work differently compared to when I work on other paper. Like my previous sketchbook had much more thicker paper, but this one has much thinner paper. Yet I don't feel like it buckles uh too terribly or like even it doesn't feel like it buckles more than my other paper from before. So I don't know if it's just because maybe I'm using less water when I'm painting or maybe the binder clips are able to kind of keep my paper down enough so that it doesn't overly buckle or anything like that. So I do enjoy somewhat painting with gouache in this, like on this kind of thinner paper. I do apologize about my speaking. I feel like my throat has been hurting for today um, because I feel like I don't tend to talk this much in general. So I think the last two days I did streaming and then the last few hours I've been doing voice like voiceover and voice recording so I think my throat's not used to it so I do apologize if I sound a little bit more raspier or if my voice sounds deeper uh, that's probably the reason why um, but for the painting process so I did paint majority of his skin first and immediately I already had regrets because my idea was to have kind of higher contrast with this piece which I did not and will not probably achieve um, by the end of this painting session because I already made things significantly darker upon doing first his skin tone and then his hair color and then everything else is just going to be more or less gradually getting darker and darker but you know it's an okay in attempt um, 
And like I said, I feel like it kind of pushes me to want to do a potentially Art Nouveau-ish kind of like Alphonse Mucha inspired stuff in the future, but I don't know if I want to tackle that traditionally just because mm, I feel like maybe it's my motivation dwindling a little bit or it might be a uh, lack of skill. So we'll, we'll see when I get there. But uh, let's talk about his outfit for a bit because his new outfit is very much my aesthetic for the most part. I love anything that kind of like low-key resembles dark academia fashion. So during his reveal for the outfit reveal relay for Luxium, I was basically uh, posting on Instagram like stories and stuff, my reactions, just like by mass typing and screenshots. And I was talking to my friend about <clears throat> during Ike's portion. Am I going to lose my voice? This is going to be bad. So for Ike's portion is that I really like dark academia clothing. And I love sweaters and turtlenecks. Obviously, you can see with Maseki. So I don't know. There, there's so many things that this kind of outfit aligned with. And I was like low-key. Me and my friend were like fangirling over a lot of the, I guess, like entries. Or I guess like people's. Uh, predictions on what his outfit was gonna be so I was very happy to see a lot of plaid and like cute sweaters and all that stuff and super cute also obviously the uh, beret was very cute but one thing I definitely like as like personally as a fan artist is the fact that he has round glasses or spectacles because one, I draw Wanu a lot and I tend to draw him with his round glasses and two, his angular more I don't even know if they're hexagons. They might be. If not, maybe they're an octagon, but I feel like they're hexagons. So his glasses are much more angular, almost like a honeycomb shape in a way. So sometimes I forget to draw the shape properly for his character. And even sometimes when I shorthand him for doodling, I tend to give him round glasses. So this makes it a little bit easier. Also for painting, so my plan was, like I said, to have higher contrast. So I kind of wanted to paint Ike's outfit and Ike himself to be a little bit on more of the pastel side or lighter side so that I could have a really punchy, dark background, which is what I planned with the kind of rectangle behind him, which was gonna frame him. And then I was gonna have the light flowers in the front. And I don't know what exactly made me change my direction entirely. Because I was gonna actually spend a lot of times just painting the flowers because I wanted the flowers to look pretty but I ended up simplifying them so much to the point where I feel like I just gave up part way so I don't know. I also mentioned this like probably almost a year ago I think. I think it's like when I started drawing Noctix a little bit. Mostly that album piece, the one where he has like an orange rose and then I drew Fulger with I think a bunch of flowers that resemble Noctix members on his lap and then I drew Uki with the almost like Hanahaki disease where he has like the more purple lavender and violet colored flowers coming from his mouth and like on his heart so I kind of want to do a flower series just for all of Niji so early like Niji Ian I don't want to say all Niji but of Niji Ian because I I've been doing a lot more flower drawing recently and seeing some of the color combinations really makes me feel like it fits certain characters or certain aesthetics of some VTubers and stuff. So maybe in the future I can do that too. I might be being a little bit over ambitious, but sometimes I feel like I get a little bit too excited when I think about certain projects. I just need to really push and try my best to finish the projects before I move on to a next, like a new project, I guess. Okay, uh, painting wise, I did screw up where his finger was. I accidentally moved his fingerless gloves, this, like the end of it for his pinky too high and I lost the entire form of his pinky. So even though I tried to paint over that portion to fix it a little bit, it's still super short and super stubby. So don't, don't look at it too closely, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of botched that hand up quite a bit. But uh, another thing that kind of helps tie the drawing together or the painting together is definitely the outlines. And sometimes I forget that this actually helps contextualize so much for my painting because I feel like I tend to want to give up quite early whenever I do gouache or any kind of painting where it's like 
I'm not too familiar. So this would be like oil painting for acrylic painting, gouache painting, where you're kind of pushing and pulling between your opaque colors of your darks and your lights and stuff. But for watercolor, I feel like it's much more straightforward. But I do want to try some new techniques or just different methods for watercolor painting because I've been watching a heck of a lot of like Japanese artists and this other artist just show their technique in real time and stuff. And I really like how soft and airy everything feels. So I might want to give that a little bit more practice. I think in the past too, I've always mentioned that painting with watercolor and or just drawing with graphite have always been my favorite method of just working traditionally. But other than working with graphite, I haven't been watercolor painting as often, which kind of makes me sad, but maybe it's because it takes me a little bit more prep work than I'm used to anymore. Back when I was like in the studio days, prep work was like it was like an obligation, you had to do it, but also like it was very fun. But then the more I stopped drawing just doodles and just like small things in my watercolor sketchbook and all I wanted to do was make like larger pieces, finished pieces, I feel like I've been straying away a little bit from watercolor painting. So maybe also, I'm probably signing myself up for too many things all at once. I might go find why can I speak today? My grammar is like non-existent. I might want to see if I can go find my watercolor journal, which is like the Strathmore one, and to finish that sketchbook off because I think it's been several, almost years since I haven't touched it, which makes me sad because I used to love painting in that sketchbook a lot. Or, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day. We'll see. Oh, right. Uh, so yeah, I didn't like how the border from behind Ike was super short. I don't know if it's because I didn't like how it didn't really contrast nicely. So I decided to kind of make it a little bit closer to the top. So basically raising it a bit higher. So my color matching skills is still a little bit off. You can see that the top portion is definitely darker and a little bit more warmer than the bottom section. But I tried my best to color match. Okay, so for the last remainder of the video. So you know how I said I like to use graphite in this sketchbook quite a bit, or at least recently. So I'm gonna be taking you guys along with me as I do a little bit of sketching to fill up the rest of the spread. So I'm just gonna do a few Ike's, uh, Ike sketches. So I'm gonna do more of a kind of like waist up and then I'm gonna do two doodles on the side and I am using the Bic mechanical pencil as per usual with 0.5 lead and I think it's just HB lead. I've had this lead for so long I don't know what type it is at this point but yeah so we're just sketching out very lightly first and then as we are about to kind of like finish up the sketch or kind of push it a little bit further by adding value and kind of like blocking in and shading some areas, I am going to be trying my best to make some of the lines to be a little bit more finished and a little bit darker so that we can push the values in some areas. But to kind of make the spread also a little bit more interesting, I'm not gonna do every sketch to the same finish. I'm gonna leave some fairly rough, very sketchy like, and then this one's gonna be more or less uh, a little bit more shaded in some areas and a little bit cleaner as well. So I decided that I would also include this with real time. I do recommend that if you do like watching me work with graphite in real time, I have plenty of, I guess like ASMR real time drawing sessions where I've done a lot of graphite on my, a little bit more of like recycled textured paper. So it has like nice sounds and you can watch me sketch real time with graphite. Cause I, I, I love working with graphite a lot. <laughs> I'm even thinking, Okay, maybe I won't say it. I'm gonna stop signing myself up for just too many ideas that I want to do, but I won't be able to commit to at this time. So, things I need to do. Flower zine, for sure. Second one, I want to probably just paint more in general and whether or not that will be traditionally with watercolor or gouache, or I'm going to tackle that kind of Niji Sanji flower illustration thing that I also want to do but I might tackle that after I do my flower zine because I would like to get practice on just sketching and rendering a bunch of different kind of flowers as much as I can so I can get a little bit of that practice before I commit to something like that. That or I'll just do like some illustrations here and there like a little bit more sporadically. 
but for these sketches here you can see that certain areas I'm going to really darken up so like definitely corners or anything that has a kind of like a deeper set uh, crease or anything like that I will tend to make a lot darker his hat's quite dark but I only shaded it a little bit where it's like darker at the very back and then as we get closer to the center and the top I will make it a lot lighter it's just for me it's just like picking and choosing because it's it's quite easy to go dark so sometimes I will go super dark first and then that will help me set out my range for my values so usually the white of the paper or whatever surface you're working on unless you have like a white pencil or a white gel pen to pull highlights most likely your paper surface or whatever you're working on is going to be your lightest value and then your pencils is going to be able to gradually get darker and darker placing your midtones but it's definitely nice to know your entire range when working with graphite or any kind of dry medium so i definitely like to push the darks as much as i can early um, just so I know there's like a range. So even when I'm coloring in his sweater-ish area, I definitely did the inside portion where it's like the, what is this, like the shoulder and the neck area first. Pushed it as dark as I would like it to be and then we'll work out from that way so that it's easier for me to pick a range a little bit easier. Hopefully the things I'm saying are not too redundant. Probably is. I feel like I'm also low-key brain dead at the moment. <laughs> even though... I don't know, I feel like talking to people just makes me so tired recently that I'm, I just feel low energy at the moment. But hopefully the pencil sketches were, I don't know, a little bit enjoyable to watch for the most part. Like I said, I wanted to leave some in real time so you guys can see how I usually work and kind of like how I'm keeping things quite simple. A lot of the lines I do like in one stroke sometimes just really quickly and then I'll do the shading as like these kind of bigger chunkier areas like on the sleeve which is why I usually tend to like things that are a little bit more chunky fabric if anything. I draw masaki a lot with sweaters and like cardigans, jackets that are a little bit more chunkier because the folds are just more appealing to me than doing like thin crisp tiny folds on like dress shirts and stuff even though that can be fun too. But like I said, for the remainder of the doodles or sketches for the spread, I'm going to keep them fairly light. So I'm not going to be really doing a cleaner sketch on top. We're just going to keep them quite light so that we can kind of keep the focus more or less on the larger one and on the gouache painting so that things are not all competing. But usually when I do some other spreads, I like to bring a lot of them up to the similar finish and just have either a larger one of like a close-up of the face or we could do like a full body or something kind of to make things a little bit more punchier near like the center of the spread or something but yeah i think after i finish this voiceover i'm just gonna go ahead and just do a bit more sketching before i go to sleep i want to continue having a sketchbook uh not like a schedule but keeping myself being able to sketch as much as i can when i can in my sketchbook I think I was doing a pretty good job making sure that I was sketching at least once a night or once a day with the sketchbook, but I've kind of broken that habit already. I think by the time you guys have seen this particular spread, it's been four days since me doing the voiceover and the spread since I've broken my streak of drawing every day in my sketchbook. So hopefully I'll get back into that. I think I'm going to make that a habit because I usually do... I don't know, light exercise-ish before I sleep too, just to make me like a little bit more tired and then maybe I'll do sketching and then I'll go to sleep. I'll just keep changing up my schedule, who knows. Uh, but yeah, last doodle, just Ike holding a book, obviously really easy, uh, shorthanded way also to do glasses. I feel like this ex expression, I do draw Wanu a lot because sometimes he has like that tiny little mouth. It's like when he drinks juice and stuff, he goes like tiny mode. There's like so many things I want to draw, but there's not enough time. I want to do like Meiji fan art, a lot of Seventeen fan art. There's also Star Rail and Genshin still. So yeah, I'll, I'll take you guys along with me when I do more of these like sketching sessions for sure. So if you guys don't mind watching me draw the things I like and enjoy, and hopefully you don't mind my rambles too, because I know some people don't like in my, my, my weird rambles, 
for the most part. I'm also just feeling very scattered brain anyway, so I probably should just end the, the voice over here. So I probably am going to do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's drawing session and I'll show you guys like a little bit of final shots of the entire spread. And I think that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!